You might have snickered at Microsoft's first entry into the MP3 world, but the second generation Zoom has become a worthy iPod alternative. I'm Brian Tong for CNET.com, and the product spotlight is fixed and focused on the latest Microsoft Zoom. Microsoft's first Zoom player wasn't on the top of everybody's gotta have list, even though it had some pretty innovative features. So, Microsoft learned from their first try, and the second gen Zoom has definitely stepped things up. Now, the first thing you'll notice is the Zoom is a whole lot slimmer compared to the brick it used to be. It's pocket friendly at half an inch thick, but even better, the capacity has been bumped up from 30 gigabytes to almost three times that amount to 80 gigabytes now. Another hardware improvement is the screen. It has a 3.2 inch screen that's slightly larger than the original and superior in size compared to the iPod Classic. But instead of plastic, it's optical glass, and that means a more scratch resistant surface. Now a new innovation to the Zune is what Microsoft calls the Zune Pad, and you can see it here, it's basically a crossbreed between a standard four direction navigation pad and the touchpad on a laptop. Now it takes a little time to get the feel, but it works really well moving through the menus and skipping through songs and photos. The interface is a whole lot bigger and bolder, and you shouldn't have any problem reading it. I mean, my grandma was even able to read it, seriously and you can change the background to a pick of your choice. Feature-wise, the original Zune had a lot packed in at the time. Subscription music support, widescreen video playback, Wi-Fi music sharing, composite video out, and RBDS-enabled FM radio, which stands for the Radio Broadcast Data System. Now, depending on the broadcaster, the Zune's FM radio displays call letters, genre, artists, and song info, and it's radio done right on a media player. I love this feature. So, all those features remain, and there's some new ones too. First up, podcasts. Yes, the Zune can now do audio and video podcasts, and the integration and ease of use with the Zune PC software is a really nice addition. Secondly, the big time feature is wireless syncing. So with the Zune, you can wirelessly sync content from your PC over your home Wi-Fi network. Take that, iPod. It automatically syncs when it's plugged in for a recharge, or you can do it manually through the Zune settings. You can still sync it through the USB cable, but how sweet is wirelessly syncing? Now, Microsoft recently announced their new XNA Game Studio platform, and we wouldn't be surprised to see Zune Gaming in the near future, so stay tuned for that. So let's talk about where it needs some work, because uh, there's that iPod thing. Yeah, it's still dominating the market. So the Zune is a PC-only device, requires its own Zune PC software, and sure, PCs make up most of the market, but it's still limiting. Another huge drawback is the content available. Now the Zune has this great size screen, but at the moment there are no TV or movie downloads available. The iPod has content galore, so it's a big miss there. And they've always touted their Zune sharing feature, but I tried finding someone to share music with the past couple days, and I had no such luck. It's really a cool idea, but you can't really use it. And there are a lot of Wi-Fi features packed in the Zune, but it comes at a price, performance. Wi-Fi just takes up a whole lot of juice, and Microsoft touts the Zoom is good for 30 hours of audio. Well, our labs tested it out, and it gave us 22 hours with the Wi-Fi turned off. So it's even less if you turn the Wi-Fi on, compared to the Apple's classic iPod, which gave us 45 hours of audio-only playback. So there's a huge difference there. Now we've gone through a whole bunch of things, but at the end of the day, the second generation Zoom makes some great improvements to the Zoom product line. I'm Brian Tong for CNET.com, and finally, our CNET crew believes the Zoom is a worthy alternative to the iPod.